What are judgments and how do they suppress our emotions? Well, a judgment is a human's view of acceptable behavior. Now, oftentimes we inherit other people's views of acceptable behavior and we take that inside of ourselves to create judgments about not only ourselves but others as well. So it could be your view of acceptable behavior, but it's more likely someone else's view of acceptable behavior. And so if we have judgments inside of us, or if we enjoy making judgments, or we feel we need to make judgments, how do making judgments suppress our emotions? Well, the first way is that they prevent us from telling the truth. The second is that they hinder our desire, they keep us in denial, intensifies law of attraction events. So let's go through an example and then we'll go through each of these and discuss their operations and how they affect us. So let's say, for example, that you're a man or a woman and you want to have sex with lots of women. Well, generally speaking, society frowns on this, right? Especially if you belong to a religious organization, okay? Not only does the religious organization often say that this is an error or sin, but oftentimes the people that are around you will project their judgments about your behavior onto you, or what also happens is you will judge yourself and in an attempt to keep the feelings of feeling other people judging you. Okay? So let's follow this thread of I'm a, I'm a guy and I want to have sex with lots of women. Okay? Well, let's say I'm married to a woman. Well, do I tell her that I want to have sex with lots of women? Or am I in fear of how she will react? This gets back to telling the truth. If you feel something inside of yourself, it is far better to tell the truth. So let's take this example. Let's say you're married and you tell the truth to your partner that I would like to have sex with lots of women. Well, how does she respond? Does she project anger at you? Does she cry and does that make you feel uncomfortable? What if she says, you know what, I'm not taking this behavior, I'm divorcing you right now. How would that make you feel? You see, this is, this is part of how we shut down our soul. By not being honest with ourselves, and by not feeling out our fear, we will potentially change our behavior in order to avoid events that get us to feel our fear. Like, let's say you want to have sex with lots of women and you tell that to your partner and then she leaves you. Well, that's actually a gift because you can actually feel out that stuff. Like, maybe there's issues of abandonment under why you are not telling the truth. And by telling the truth, it allows a, an emotional truth that's underneath of you to come to light. Hinders our desire. Well, oftentimes the thing that we want to do is not really connected to the individuality of our soul. So going back to this example here, I want to have sex with lots of women. Do you really want to have sex with lots of women? Or do you get some emotional uh, gratification out of feeling desired physically by a woman? Or do you get gratification out of feeling wanted? Or is it just the physical act that maybe like your partner is not satisfying your sexual desires and that you feel that they are not, um, you know, up for experimenting and playing in the way that you want to? Like, maybe your partner's, um, you know, maybe your partner doesn't want to experiment sexually with you because she herself has had 
sexual trauma in the past. And by saying something like this, it would trigger the emotions in her. How about keep us in denial? This is a big one. Let's say you're married and you're walking around and you see women that you're physically attracted to. Out of fear, you don't say how you actually feel. And as a result, these emotions inside of you, the attraction to other people, will continue to build and build and build and it will drive you crazy. To the point where oftentimes it explodes in a particular event, which gets to here. The intensifying law of attraction. If you want to have sex with lots of women and you are in a relationship and you are not being honest about this, it, this feeling is going to intensify and you will attract a person, not your partner, that you want to have sex with and it will happen. But then you have to come to terms with the fact that you have, cre you have committed a non-loving action against your partner. You can apply this to all kinds of situations, right? Let's say, let's say you've got tons of rage inside of you and you want to kill somebody. In my view, it would be better to be honest that, you know what, I actually do want to kill this person. However, it's non-loving to follow through in the action. So, in the most loving way possible, like going back to this scenario here, you would tell your partner, you know what, I feel attraction towards other people. I don't understand at this time why I feel this way, but I'm being honest with you in an attempt to get underneath my emotions to understand the root cause of why that is. Now, if your partner is loving, she would hear you and she herself would not make judgments about your behavior. Your partner would provide uh, a comfortable space for you to express yourself and then it would be on you to do the work of unraveling the emotional root of why you feel that way, which often gets back to our parents, right? So again, if, our, if we're young and we're not feeling loved unconditionally all the time as the creator would love us, which is essentially everybody because no one's perfect at this current time, then we've got these emotions inside of us about craving the attention of the feminine. And oftentimes this expresses itself through attracting sexual partners. So I actually feel that if you're honest about saying that you want to have sex with lots of women, you will work through it very quickly. And then you will actually lose the desire to do that thing. As we've talked about in previous videos, Sexual attraction is actually related to the various emotional injuries in your soul. So by being honest about how you feel in any particular area, you're able to get to the emotions that are underneath that and then you can feel that stuff out. So going back to the example of wanting to murder somebody, you know, I'm not suggesting that you actually do murder somebody, but I feel that it is worthwhile and healthy and loving to tap into your rage and express that rage in a general way, not directed at a specific person, not projection. I personally scream, but you know, maybe you could like hit an inanimate object or something like that. I don't really enjoy hitting things, but maybe you enjoy hitting things. And that is a way for you to release your anger, which shows you what is actually the expectation underneath the anger. And then you can get into your fear and then get into your grief, okay? So if this is the case that you wanna have sex with lots of women, maybe your expectation is, is that women please you sexually. That's a pretty common belief for a lot of men. A lot of men believe that part of the woman's role is to please them sexually. And that is an error. It is, it is no one's role to do anything for or to you. Actually, uh, you know, sex in its pure form is total act of giving, right? It's better to give than receive. That's how, in a loving relationship, one would feel about it, okay? But again, it's important to be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself, even if you feel that your desires are non-loving. Resist making judgments, 
and allow yourself to express yourself in a safe way in order to get underneath the emotions that cause that particular desire. Good luck. Love and peace.